Thank you, Ben. Uh, I actually serve on the Utah Water, Water Task Force, which is a uh, legislative executive branch body that uh, considers all matters related to water in terms of policy and legislation. But today I'm here as an attorney to represent a lot of water users that uh, are impacted by Utah Lake. Uh, one of my clients is the Utah Lake Water Users Association. They own and operate the Utah Lake pumping station on the northwest corner of the lake that controls the lake level and the pumping of water out of the lake to serve water users. So I'm here uh, in a little bit different perspective. I'm not here to talk about microbiology or anything like that. I'm here to talk about the human life form and how do we use the lake to sustain uh, agriculture and our drinking water supplies. And uh, on a more personal note, um, I grew up on a family farm in South Jordan, Utah that relies on Utah Lake water and the farm continues to operate. There aren't many farms left in South Jordan if you've been out there lately, but our family still continues in that venture. Although it's not me, it's my cousin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump what normally is the conclusion slide. Um, my first slide is going to be what five things I want to make sure you understand. And then if we have time to go into more detail, we, we will. There are important facts that people uh, need to understand on how the lake functions as a water storage reservoir. In the early 1800s, in the late 1800s, water started to be stored by uh, water users in Salt Lake County because they were having a difficult time sustaining a, uh, you know, irrigation season long uh, water supply. So they installed a dam. And uh, as a result, there are these primary water rights, these primary water supplies in the lake that are used, uh, you know, for irrigation. The, then also that came on later is, is a very uh, important concept to understand as to how the lake provides drinking water in both Utah and Salt Lake counties. We don't drink the lake, right? But indirectly, the water storage in Utah Lake allows reservoirs like Jordan L Reservoir, part of the Central Utah Project, to be built. And they do that by bringing down from Strawberry Reservoir through Spanish Fork Canyon waters from the Duchesne River system and they uh, store it in Utah Lake. And that replaces the water that would have come down from the Provo River system, but instead is stored up in Jordanelle. And Jordanelle is a main water supplier uh, for culinary drinking water purposes. And so having Utah Lake as a storage reservoir is an extremely important function that must continue to, uh, to exist. Secondly, as part of being a, a reservoir, it's operated for flood control purposes. Uh, Jacob Holdaway's family has experienced the ebbs and flows and the rising of the lake. And so when the, 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 the lake was first dammed, the question came for the Utah landowners surrounding the lake, well, how high up is this going to go? How do we protect uh, Utah lake landowners? And then on the other side of the coin is, um, how do you protect landowners down on the Jordan River? And so the lake, uh, there are agreements, et cetera, that control that kind of thing. So then the, the, the third thing you need to understand, and I've already mentioned it, is that the lake is used for irrigation, uh, not only in Utah, Salt Lake County, but in Utah County, there are some canals that use it. It's used for industrial purposes. Um, Kennecott Copper relies heavily on the water supply out of the lake. 
and then for the municipal water supplies that I, I, I talked about. Now, the Utah Lake operations and the water supply depend on uh, decrees, agreements, and regulations that have developed over a over hundred years. So there's this delicate balance based on decrees, agreements, uh, state engineer uh, uh, regulations on how the lakes operated, that if those are disrupted, then uh, you know, our current management system uh, falls by the wayside. And so today's lake features of the surface area of the lake, the, the, the depth of the lake, and how today's lake levels fluctuate. All of those features and characteristics of today um, control, I mean, it's what, the, how the management system is now dependent on. If you change the lake elevations by whatever kind of action, if you're going to dig holes or whatever in the lake, or you're going to you know, do whatever kind of project you want, uh, you, you can think about if it's going to affect the lake elevations, you're going to have problems. This is a picture of the, uh, of the outlet of the Jordan River. Uh, this, on the, the bottom left corner is the uh, outlet gate, which is, is closed while water is being stored. And then up in the middle center of the photo is the Utah Lake pump station. And uh, that's also closed during storage. But once the lake level reaches a level of 4,489 feet, then the, the, the compromise decree, uh, agreement and decree that was issued in 1985 requires that you have to open up the outlet gate and let the water go down the Jordan River. It can, cannot reach a, reach a certain height. But at the same time, if there are actions taken that are going to lower the elevation of the lake and historically how it's operated, that's going to leave that pump station high and dry. And so, uh, those are, are some of the, the concerns and some of the issues that uh, the Utah Lake Water Users Association is dealing with in making sure we can maintain the water supply functions of the lake. Thank you very much.